Hello and welcome to Skandia Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Instagram as Skandia and I am Skandia Knits as the designer on Ravelry. I also have a group on Ravelry, which is the best place to get in touch and get support and take part in knit alongs. Speaking of which, we're running the yellow knit along of 2022 again. So head over there to check that out. I don't really have much else to say about that at the moment. I'm still working on the kind of price uh, sorting out things. I barely have time to record as is, which I will be getting into today, <laughs> why that is. And so that's sort of still happening. I'm very excited to tell you what I've been up to since last time. Uh, but yeah, let's introduce the podcast to new viewers. I, I usually do that, don't I? But I've had like five or six recording attempts so far because my downstairs baby neighbors, they are twins, they are uh, getting ever louder. Although I only seem to be hearing one at a time. So I figured it's just one of them. But mostly it's just me who can't get my words out. So that's the usual here to new viewers. That's, that's the usual here. This is where I sit and try to talk about knitting every other week or so. But a lot of times what comes out is just nonsense and I have to re-record. So... To returning viewers, hi and welcome back. I'm just gonna jump straight into the program because I don't know, I don't have much time because I'm recording in the evening because this time of year you can really only record really early or really late, otherwise you just get the sun in your face, uh, my face, so uh, I am not early, so that's, that's what we're dealing with. But yeah, thank you so much for the warm reception of the, uh, what did I call it, <laughs> Oostfjord cardigan? <laughs> this one, thank you. That was nice. I was also wearing this at the event that I was at this week, which I will get. To. I'm just going to talk about it right away. I clearly, clearly, I want to. I went to Unravel, which I can't. I mean, this is this episode is just going to be about Unravel. Let's just be. Let's just agree that that's what it's going to be about. Unravel was the last festival, the last yarn festival I went to before lockdown. It has been going on every February in Farnham, just south west of London, uh, for years, right up until lockdown. And I've been going regularly for a couple of years and it is one of my favorite yarn festivals. It's just really fun and I get to see a lot of people who I know. And since lockdown, I'd kind of just forgotten just how many people in this community that I know and just how awesome that was. So I'll be talking a lot about that at the end of the episode, but I do want to give a massive thanks to everyone who had nice things to say about my new design that I was wearing. Uh, I'm not even like good at like planning and thinking about like, oh, I'm gonna wear my new design to this thing because I'm a designer and I think about these things. No, it's just that I happen to have made this one for my wardrobe and I do wear it an awful lot. I'm basically just cycling between this one, Corsa Kofta and Troll Tin. Those are like my three in circulation outerwear cardigans because they're all so warm. I barely need to get my coat this time of year. So that's that. I'm just going to put that here because that is not a new pattern this week. I don't have a new pattern this week, so we can all calm down. <laughs> but I am working on a sock design that will hopefully come out in not too long. And I'm very excited about it. The idea is quite simple, but it's also quite like, just it has every size in it. And I've been thinking about the name for that pattern. And I did ask on Instagram and it seemed like most people think it is a good name. I can't decide if it's a very good name or a very terrible name because I've had this pattern name in mind since I woke up one morning in 2018 when I was visiting Kristen of Woolenwine. I don't know where it came from, but it's lice, lice, baby. <laughs> because the pattern has like a lice pattern, you know, the Norwegian Lusikofte dot, just, you know, like a lot of patterns of mine have. I don't know what this was. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's clearly not gonna work out for people who don't know that that's what it translates to, but I think it's, it's, it's fun. I don't have any other names for that pattern. And uh, I spent a whole afternoon trying to come up with a name for the red cardigan. So, you know, I'm still clearly just referring to it as the red cardigan. So that's that, but it's called Oast Feud. Right, so you probably can't tell this, but I am editing away so much. Future Ellie knows she's editing away a lot because I am umming and ahhing and taking pauses and I can't even finish my sentences. I'm just clearly a little bit scrambled up here because wow, what a week it has been, a uh, weekend. I should say, but I do take a few days and especially since after lockdown, I take more time to come down from things. Like I remember when, you know, we were talking about this when I'd been to Norway last summer, this summer past, and I almost needed a whole month just to recoup from the journey. <laughs> like, I, th I don't think it's that intense anymore, but clearly uh, it's been, what, four days since the festival and I'm still just sort of getting there. <laughs> so, Mm. 
Anyone else finding the lockdowns having that effect? Or is it, am I just, is this just what was, was gonna happen for me? Um, anyway, I've been knitting. I've been knitting so much and I wanna show you something that I haven't shown you before, but before then I will show you how far I got on my Marius because I brought my Marius with me at Unravel so that I could just chuck it under my arm and knit on the sleeves, which seems to mesmerize a lot of people that I can just like walk and knit stocking at. Uh, trust me when I say this, I if I try that with the color work, we'd all be having some very good laughs at least. So that there's that, but yeah. <laughs> I did actually do that with the Utra because it, Utra has a very simple chart and I was like walking around like posh end of London. No idea what I was doing there. I think I'd been to the embassy or something. And uh, yeah, but stocking out sleeves is very good to just chuck under the arm and just like get, get working on when you are at any sort of event or what have you. So this is the Marius. Yeah, that's not anything new. What is new is the sleeves. They're both done. It has sleeves. I think last time I had just one sleeve like up to here or something. Like, yeah, no, I had finished one sleeve last time. And we worked the other one up to here and then I just finished the rest of it. The rest of it. Is that what I did? I think that's what I did. That's that. I, I managed to match them up just about. I think last time I said something that I hadn't started the decreases until around about here. I actually had hidden some in, in the color work chart turns out and I found out a little bit late in the other sleeves. So I just like, couple of rows further down. It really isn't a big deal. Uh, but that's what I get for not writing down anything that I'm doing with this uh, project that I'm not following a pattern for. All I'm doing is following the chart. The chart I kind of sort of more or less have memorized or I can just glance at my cushion over there uh, or anything else I have around in the Marius print and pretty much figure it out. The only thing I calculated was just the, the whole bus circumference. That's like one number that I only need to know for costing one and that's it. <laughs> I don't have very little written down, but I did write down a little bit about the, the decreases, especially the cuff decreases, just so that I could do that on the go at Unravel. And yeah, very happy about, about the sleeves. I like how there's a lot of them decreasing at the end here. That is very typical of a lot of Norwegian kind of color work jumpers, cardigan, kofta, what have you. As which is nice because that means that the sleeves are roomy and have a lot of ease all the way up. You know, it's not like they're gonna taper and be kind of tight here, but loose up here. They're just, I just like it. I really should do that more. Kind of going back to kind of my, my knitting origins, not just, you know, sort of more fitted, tailored, clever construction stuff that I have been really, really into for the past, I don't know, five years, more than that. But this is very just simple, boxy shape. I, I did base sort of the idea of the construction around my eyelander pattern. I would say uh, eyelander, the version A, so the one with the simpler shoulders, given there are no shoulders here. And that's that. I am now ready to get back to the body and I'm sort of deciding whether I should make it longer or not because actually the body is quite long. So now I do actually have it on, you know, we should just try it on now. It's been a while since we had a try on on the podcast. Uh, we can see how long it is. It's just a shame because I did not really dress well like waist down, but I'm at least I'm wearing something, you know, there's that. <laughs> okay, so I think that's the length we want to go for. If I have this shirt down kind of at my very, very high hips, I think that's a good length. You can knit stocking out to around about here. How long is that? Let's, what is the difference here? What is that? <clears throat> this is science, guys. Uh, okay, we're well, somewhere between 10 and five centimeters, two to four inches. I'm gonna knit two inches. I'll try it on again and then we'll find out. The thing about when you're measuring top-down garments like this, always add extra. You think it's gonna be hanging on your body the way it is right now, but trust me, it's gonna like kind of crawl up and just become a bit shorter than you think it will be. Always add a bit extra. Uh, when in doubt, go for the longer length. I found that anyway, and I really do like my cropped garments, but I tend to find that when I measure like this, I do find it just ends up being a little bit shorter than estimated this way. So a lot of times, like we discuss like top down versus bottom up, which is a discussion I kind of grow, grow a bit tired of. I started this podcast feeling very passionately team top down, and then have sort of since come a bit around to prefer both for different things. So I think I'm probably mostly team top down still, but like there's a lot of constructions that I think are quite suited for 
bottom up, like setting sleeve shapes. It doesn't have to be like you're setting the sleeve, it's just easier to modify the arm side for your own shoulder width. Decrease more, decrease less, right? And so the argument for top down is usually like it's so much easier to estimate the body length. That's usually what people say, right? Because we put on the garment like I've done now with, you know, extra long circulars, with interchangeables, what have you, and measure. And I, I mean, I remember when I did this, like back when I discovered this and, you know, my family were a bit more like, conventional knitters uh, were just kind of like, you always do things a special way, don't you? And I'm just like, yeah, this works. This is a really good way for me who has not made a lot of garments to figure out what fits before I've actually finished it. And I do agree with that. But I do also think that those of us who have made a couple of garments, for me, that's a big exaggeration. I made more than hundred, but whatever number of garments you have made, more than just, you know, two really, will start getting an idea of what length we like. Not that you have to go for the same length for every uh, thing you make yourself. My goodness, it just got really dark. <laughs> but you'll have an idea. And so when you have an idea, you don't really need to do this whole trying on thing anymore. And I honestly don't remember the last time I did that because I now know what I like. And so when I know, I can more easily just calculate. You don't really need to calculate a whole lot when you do. You just knit straight. What am I trying to make it sound mathsy when it's really just like, hey, do you like your bodies to be 35 centimeters? How about you knit it to 35 centimeters? And that you can do top down or bottom up, doesn't really matter. I think the trying on to see how, what length you like thing works really well when you're starting out because a lot of us would do start out with things like raglans, which the yoke depth varies so much across sizes and patterns that you really don't know if then what you're gonna get. And so how, how low the, the yoke drops will determine, you know, how long you need the body to be. But, you know, after a while, you just figure out ways that you have the, the length that you want for yokes. You find probably patterns to have a bit more specified uh, yoke depth. And, you know, with the row gauge, you kind of try to match that. I just find that most of the things I have, like, will start at the sort of same place. And just the length, really, it ends up being roughly the same. I find that for this sort of shape, so sort of drop shoulder, setting sleeves, anything that has like a seam over the shoulders like this, I tend to prefer the length to be more... 33 it seems to be a number I've landed on, 30, 30 to 35. When I do yokes and raglans, so anything that you just like increase up from the neck in the round, I then tend to go for shorter lengths. So we're like closer to between 25 and 30. I seem to have landed on 28 a lot of time. Like there's not a huge difference there. It's just, yeah, two inches, five centimeters. But that seems to be where I've just arrived at. So the whole like trying on thing to see if it's long enough. I, that I find it is really just applicable in the beginning, which is why top down is really good for beginners. Uh, but after a while, I did, that that benefit of top down has kind of expired for me. I don't need that. I, I just don't need it anymore. I could do it, obviously, since I knit so much top down. I just don't find myself doing it. But I'm doing it now for your viewing pleasure. Oh, it's so nice and it's oversized and it's gonna have bottom bounds and be a little bit bigger than it is now as well and just so yeah, I'm gonna be snipping it up here and picking up button bands. Although I do tend to pick up button bands first. You can do it before and after. I think for one sleeve I did it first and the other one I did it after, so. That's that, that's, is that, is that our, <laughs> is that the, the podcast icon? I don't know. I never plan those photos. I always try to get a good screenshot and it just turns out not great. That was a screenshot, wasn't it? <laughs> The yarn, the yarn, the yarn. I am working with Osk by Hillesvog, one of my favorite yarns. It is a sort of, well, sport weight and non-superwash, Norwegian woolly wool, very, you know, rustic as we say. Not that I know what that word means, but we all seem to agree what it means when we use it. And so it is really lovely. It is similar to Fionnul, if you're familiar with that, or Tuave, which they are discontinuing. Why, Sonnes, why? The only good yarn you have other than Hedgins, why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? <sighs> they better be rebranding and bringing that yarn back. I can't deal with this. Everyone write them kind, but slightly upset emails. Don't, don't be, don't be mean, but like, <laughs> let your opinion be heard. A uh, huge mistake, because those yarns are my favorites. Uh, we already lost PT too a while back. They merged it with Fienil, but really they just removed it and put some colorways onto Fienil. 
I don't like this trend and I think it's weird because people are flocking more and more towards these sort of yarns. Like every knitting one in the beginning they say, oh, I hate itch yarns and I only want to knit Supush Merino till the end of my days. And everyone, me, myself included, have to eat our words and realize that this yarn is great. And because so many people have gotten that down that path in the past five years, it is a very strange decision to me, but that was not a rant I was gonna go on today. I was gonna rant about how amazing Oski is by Hillisburg which has, oh, the best colors ever. And just, I, I weep in my soul that I can't, see now I'm getting into it, <laughs> that I can't get hold of this yarn in London or in Trondheim even. Uh, I think there is a yarn shop in the shopping center in Riesvolland, if anyone's there, I think they still have it. It's been a couple of years since I was there in that shop, but generally kind of hard to get your mitts on some places. And it's an awful shame because it's an awfully lovely yarn. Let's get a close up, yeah. Just, if you're unhappy with your colour work tension, just knitting in these type of yarn, I don't know what happened with my yarn dominance there. But like, you'll just find that, so, uh, it, the yarn does a lot of your work for you in the way that other sort of other fibres, other superwash yarns, like all that stuff, they just can't quite do. I mean, they can, you just block it, it'll be fine. The yarn delivers, the yarn just delivers. Like, I just love, I just love it. I, I am also just begging anyone in the UK who runs a yarn shop, be that in person or online, preferably online so everyone can get it, to stock this yarn, please and thank you. Either Ask or Fienud or both even, even better. Uh, we are absolutely deprived of, of this awesome yarn here and this is just, I don't know how we're coping. I'm just gonna put this away now and then we can talk about the other work in progress I've been working on because it's a design that will hopefully be out in not too long. Um, I say that, I'm not even done knitting it yet and I haven't sent it out to test knitters. So don't get too excited, okay? I'm just working on it. We're hopefully gonna see it before summer because uh, it is a pretty wintry type thing. It is indeed for my nephew, which is why I'm being so quick about it because Obviously I want, want to have him wear it while he still can. Who knows if it's going to fit next winter. I kind of aim towards that. So it, it probably will. Now, I did show you this yarn um, two episodes ago when I returned from Norway and I bought this yarn. Uh, my sister picked out the yarn. This is very much the, the color scheme, right? Gray, white and orange. That's that's his wardrobe. He's an autumn baby, he has an autumn wardrobe. Just, I'm, I'm not meddling with that. I think it's really cute. I love it. I struggled the longest time to know what it should look like and trying to combine all sorts of charts, both from chart uh, dictionaries and from my own mind. I ended up sort of finding something in one of my Sarbu chart books, of course, and it worked with three different colors. And then I did the, the size chart so that I start my design process by grading so that I know that whatever I do, that I modify as I'm knitting, or whatever I plan for the one size that I'm gonna make, it will always work on all sizes and it will work equally well on all sizes that I'm not compromising on any size so that, you know, the sample that I made for my size or my nephew's size is, you know, the, the better one and the other ones are sort of like a compromise. I don't do that. I will treat all sizes fairly <laughs> and just do them up front so I know that this is gradable, I think. It's just such a shame as well if you made something you're really proud of and then it, it you can't grade it. So anyway, without further ado, I don't have a name for this yet, so we're just gonna look at it without announcing what it's called, because I don't know what it's called. Um, so yeah, this is it's probably easy to see from the back because I have a big old stick in the front. So yeah, I am holding Fienul Double and I am loving it. Oh my days, this is so scrumptious double. It's just getting the stitch definition that I like, didn't know Fienel could have. And I often find when you hold yarn double that it loses the stitch definition, so I don't know what sort of mystery is happening here, but let's just get a little close up, shall we? So you can see, there's some hecking <laughs> stitch definition happening. And yeah, it's the raglan. I think raglans are great for kids. I don't think they're great for size inclusive adult patterns always. They can be, you just have to put some more increases on the bust size than the sleeves for like bigger sizes. Uh, have the yoke work a little bit longer for the smaller sizes, like just kind of try to make it fair again across all sizes. I would just, we can get on that soapbox another day because the sun is setting and we're relying more on the light from a laptop at this moment than anything else. This seems to work kind of better and I can just do this, ha. Huh. Okay, so there it is. It's so cute. I am sort of going a little bit back and forth on, on the sleeve length. I think this is good and just add a bit more, but I also think it might be a bit long. The thing is, so I've been working so much, especially today, but also for a number of days, on my size chart for children. Now, normally I have for other people's size charts. I 
you know, Yarncraft Council has one that a lot of people rely on, but I just find that it doesn't have a lot of the numbers I need. I also find it a little bit confusing because it will tell you the, the chest circumference, but actually if you look at anything from size three years old and younger, smaller, the waist measurement is bigger. Of course, because babies are kind of just weirdly shaped like that. And uh, you should really look at that for those sizes. And it's easy to miss that and just, you know. So I always find the smaller size just to be too small. And now I'm like, oh, because of the waist. I thought I was making them too big to compromise. Now actually I'm making them bang on if you take the waist into account. So I was like, oh, thank goodness. Because I've already made the, the, the sizing grading here, yeah, four times because um, there was nothing wrong with them. I just, I just, every time I made them, I came up with ways to make it better and clearer and actually sort of reducing the number of sizes. This is gonna sound weird because kids don't differ that much in circumference. Uh, like if you look from the, the smallest size, that's usually like 40 something centimeters to the bigger size, that's usually like 70 something centimeters. Like it's not like a huge difference. So I realized you really don't need a lot of sizes, but you need a lot of lengths. It's most the leg length. Body length is really easy to modify, but also sort of have some notes on that. But like the leg length, I actually offered three different lengths for uh, each size. So then you kind of have three times however many sizes there is. Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. And that seems to cover all the measurements in the size chart so that you don't like miss out on any. So yeah, I feel really happy about that. But yeah, like I said, I can't really promise when this will be out. I'm still finishing up my sample. I should probably start recruiting some testers for that. But you know, that's that's the little onesie. Yeah, feed and health doubled. That makes it about an hour in weight and it's really quick. I got through one of these legs in Farnham the first day. That was really easy. I love how the little leg looks like a foxtail. Someone pointed that out to me. I was like, oh my taste, I see it. So that's that's cute. I love that. Obviously the, the yolks will differ for each size so that they can be longer. So they're all written so that they're gonna land on this same sort of section. So they just make you start earlier. And I've charted it out because I'm trying to be a good person. That reminds me, I was actually working on uh, charted sleeves for the librarian pullover. Uh, the written instructions will tell you how to do it and you can figure it out from that, but I've heard from enough people that that would be a improvement, so that improvement is coming. And uh, yeah, I made charts for every, every sleeve. I'm not sure you need the full chart or just have to get started because it's a very big chart and I don't think you can fit on a sheet of paper even. So I'll have a think about that. And that concludes my works in progress. Thank goodness for that, because it's really getting dark here and I just need this slight, just this amount of light to show you the, the purchases from Unravel. I'll just start with that and then we can just talk about what Unravel was like as we're getting into it. I think that's the plan. It's sort of benefiting from the bit of light that we have left. So I actually went on two days. I ended up going alone both days and I say alone. I always think that like, I'm gonna go to a show, I'm going alone, I don't know anyone. I was like, I know everyone. <laughs> And I don't shut up. So I have, I the first day I didn't have time to buy much yarn. I just talked to everyone that I haven't seen for so long. And you know what? The next day I traveled down there again and it, there were still people I hadn't talked to the first day. And there were obviously people who attended the second day that hadn't been the first, but like, you know, this is the thing about, I love about these festivals, especially these like, they're smaller, but not super small, but not like Edinburgh huge or Vogue huge, is that we're like on such equal footing. And I really love that. It's just so nice. There isn't that huge like perceived gap that you see online between those with big accounts and followers and those who are not businesses are just kind of knitting in. It just kind of feel like we're so far apart sometimes. I'm like, when you're in person like that and these events, it's just like so clear that we're just all members of the same knitting community. And it's not this like big difference that people seem to be talking about that you just see online. It just doesn't reflect in person. And you talk to vendors and visitors alike and I'm just going there as a visitor. And I just love that. And I, it was just so nice to be reminded of that. It's, it's just a lot of stuff going on online and, and you could easily mistake, you know, the nonsense that happens online for what the knitting community is actually like. And then you just meet in person and just, it's just so nice. I also got to see my local knitting group there. There was like four of them visiting and I'm big time ashamed that I haven't showed up for that meetup since, since lockdown really, which is funny because that's where I met my flatmate. You know, it's such a lovely bunch and yeah, and I actually ran into some of them at the same venue in September when they ran Sweater Weather, which was sort of a much sort of smaller, <laughs> as just kind of getting back onto festivals again type event. And they were also reminded me that they were still running again and I should show up. And I'm like, yes, I will. <laughs> so that was really nice to see them again. One of them was even wearing the Utra, my, my sweater. I was like, that's lovely. Thank you. Uh, was also someone else there wearing the Islander and 
thank you. That was so nice. It was absolutely heartwarming to see people wear. I did actually buy some yarn the first day, even though I was mostly bit busy just like chatting to everyone. And that was to pronounce this Weku yarn. That was probably not the right pronunciation. I should have asked about that. I got three skeins and uh, it's actually a little bit outside my comfort zone. It's actually a lot outside of my comfort zone in terms of color. I shared a photo of the yarns that they had in iron weight yarn and posted and said it to my sister and said which one we like for a little nephew boy and um, shockingly he, <clears throat> she, uh, picked orange. There's the close-up. So this is quite a lot paler orange than the one I'm working on in the 1C. It actually looks quite saturated on camera. I don't know how that's happening, but it's, uh, yeah, a, a little bit more muted, not as saturated as my usual color choice. The colorway is called Fences. It's on Merino Iron. That's the name of the base. 100% superwash merino, 166 meters per 100 grams. So then I had to get my mitts on on the first day to make sure I got, you know, the required amount for a little baby jumper. I even started designing this already because, of course, I get really excited about charting down the numbers. This is what I've got currently. A children's sweater that is contiguous because I haven't seen them any contiguous children's sweaters. I'm sure there are plenty. I just, I thought we needed an iron way contiguous children's sweater. Uh, the way it is currently is that it's just talking it, but like, I don't want to. <laughs> I like my designs to look like my designs. You know, I want them to be recognizable. Like, even though people probably would love to do a stocking sweater, and you can always do that. I am thinking of what to put on it. I am thinking maybe twisted stitches, like kind of fake cables. You know, we don't want actually cable. Or maybe we do. Maybe we do want cables. Maybe we want a simple stitch pattern. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, it's like a typical sort of satin sleeve silhouette, if you will, but it's made with a continuous method. I even made charts for the front and or back for all the sizes. So I can actually just chart it and make it work for every size. That. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the plan currently. I reckon I can get a uh, size quite a bit bigger than my nephew's size with three skeins of iron. I'm not super rushed about it, to be honest. I think we can look at this for like maybe next winter, but it's nice to start planning it now and start thinking about what it should look like. I have some ideas in mind, but I try always to not overcomplicate it. I think people who want to knit for kids, they want something that's going to be quick and easy, but also need to have some interest and, you know, a draw, if you will. And I'm just like, hmm. The problem is that there are too many options. <laughs> Not that I don't have any idea. I have too many. Um, so that's, yeah, WQ yarn, WQ yarn. Really lovely yarn. It's a, a yarn dyeing business run by two sisters uh, who are really cool and nice and just get to see them again. <laughs> um, gosh, it is so dark. Thank goodness my camera can adjust, but my goodness. I also got some Garthenor, which was silly because they actually have that yarn in Knit With Attitude, but you know, <laughs> I had to have it. I love this yarn. I, they had a whole room to themselves and it was, too good. It was too good. Stop trying so hard. It was very hard to choose. So I landed on these two skeins of their Shetland uh, DK weight yarn. So this is number three, Gothano number three. And I was just feeling the skeins. I'm like, oh, like I know Shetland can be soft, but this is just, oh, this is just, oh. And when I say like, oh, I don't mean it's like cashmere. I just mean just like, oh, this is like a sheep I would hug, you know? The shade is bolder and 50 grams, 115 meters. But I can't even see, it's that dark. I know you don't believe me, but it is. <laughs> I am sitting in the darkness. I just have a very good camera. The yarn up close, it's the Garth and skin. They're so lovely, honestly. Ugh. Oh, so I'm thinking cable hat. I don't, I don't have a pattern in mind. We'll find one or make one, I don't know. Cable hat. Everyone, everyone needs a, a gray cable hat. I figure two skeins that'll do. Can make the cables quite tight and make them pop, you know. And if I run out, well, it turns out my local yarn shop has this yarn, so I guess I don't have to worry about that. Like I said, it was so, so nice to meet so many people who I haven't seen in a knitting show in, over, well, two years at least. Uh, and one of them was Layla of the Urban Pearl yarn. And so I knew basically that I, that purple yarn of hers had to come home with me, but I managed to put off until the next day at least. And then I saw that, you know, they were starting to become a bit uh, fewer and I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. So, and this has to become my design because my goodness, look at this yarn. Look at it. <gasps> this is a light worsted way. I would lean on heavy DK, whatever. This, they clearly DK and worsted can overlap. Um, so that's, that's that, look at that, look at that. Her color palette is just so much up my alley. It's not even funny. 
I will say though, like I like, unravel this time, like there were so many amazing diaries. Like I'm not, you know me, like I'm a bit like selective about my hand dyed yarn. Like I'm more of into the commercially dyed rustic yarns. And then when people show up with like yarns like this, like I, I, I'm all over it. And there were quite many I unravel this time that I had like this whole wall of, of colors that were like, oh, uh, wonderful worsted, 100% super push merino, 230 per 115 grams. So I actually have more than uh, 500 grams. 75, so I have 575 grams. My goodness, this is gonna be quite quite a beastie. Logo close up, because we're gonna have that. Um, yeah, that's that. So I know I'm gonna have to design with this. Uh, how can I not? I've been really enjoying designing with super wash merino. <laughs> I know. Don't tell anyone. I really enjoyed making cherry puff and uh, synchestra pullover. Why stick to just one thing? I really enjoy them and I really am just very excited when I wear them. I'm just, I am more of a, I guess I use the sort of rustic yarns more for outer wear personally. So having these super wash garments for indoor when it's not, you know, super cold, it is, it's really nice. So, or you could just use finer yarn that is non super wash too. I mean, there's like lots of options and I want to have some of these among my options. I also had the pleasure of meeting uh, Christine of Fravert Yarn. You guys know I'm crazy about that yarn. There you go. And uh, I'm going to show the colors. You can see on the colors who this is for. You can just see who's going to receive this. Is it the nephew or is it the nephew? I'm not going to tell you where it's going to be yet, but I know exactly when it's going to be. Uh, I'm excited to, to can knit it up and uh, then I'll show you. But yeah nephew garment design. Bit about the yarn, in case you don't know, I talk about this yarn a lot, it is a lovely so-called DK weight yarn, I would argue strongly that it's worsted weight, but it does, it is called Rabwerk DK. It's Bavarian Merino and I mean, I have a rule that you can't really just stick cut through uh, knitting that is in Merino without sewing, except, except this. For some reason it, it holds up, at least the sport weight does, I haven't tried it on the DK. I think it's really lovely yarn anyway. I made the um, Librarian vest out of this yarn and I used the sport weight equivalent for Nordbuckan Kongru mittens, I made those in this yarn. 100% merino, though you wouldn't think it, because it's rustic. 220 meters per 100 grams, which yeah, that is the meter range of a kind of heavy DK, but I, I still think it's worsted. And what's cool is that it, there's a lot of different shades of this merino flea. So Ravark just started out being the undyed yarn and just comes in different shades of uh, white to gray to like charcoal. But now Christine is dying on every of these shades. So you can get this green in subtle variations or and, and the orange as well. Um, I, th I just think that's really cool. That was Unravel. I, I just I just keep going. I need to make an Instagram post just to kind of commemorate the whole thing. It was just so nice to see people. I keep saying that. Uh, especially lovely to see Cece coming from all... Whoa, it just started raining. Oh, that's why it's so dark so early. Uh, yeah, Cece came all the way from New York and I haven't seen Cece since... I must have been since Vogue Knitting in 2020. January 2020, mind you, not not the rest of it. Um, yeah, it was just really nice. That I, the nice is a word I keep using a lot in this episode, but that's what it was. Managed to run into her shortly after arriving on on Friday. Obviously, met up again on Saturday and went out to eat, and it was just really really nice. Uh, and she came up to London on Sunday, and I obviously dutiful as I am make sure that she doesn't miss out on the great yarn shops. Uh, sadly, a lot of them were close, but knit with attitude was not. And so we managed to go there. It's been, it's been quite a sudden change here in London. For those of you who are like elsewhere in the world, in terms of lockdown and everything, there's a lot of things that have opened up. And you know, there's a lot of uh, precautions and people taking responsibility and there's, a, you know, each event does something and each shop will do something. And I just thought I'd inform people who are um, other places, just kind of where it's at here currently. So yeah, we spent a lot of time in it with Attitude and yeah, it turns out, <laughs> hi Susan if you're watching, who was working there that day and I didn't know, but apparently uh, she and Cece already knew each other, so that was awesome. And yeah, Jimmy did an amazing talk on, on the Saturday, uh, just kind of talking about her journey to become a knitting, knitting designer, how that came about. Uh, and that was really cool. Well done, Jimmy. Uh, she's Jimmy Ness. I have one of my books here somewhere, probably downstairs. Uh, awesome designer here in London, outside of London, just in this area. And that was cool. 
Thanks so much to everyone who listened to me ramble and just share excitement about seeing people again. Uh, everyone who we just had a conversation with and who, yeah. Yeah, Jeanette uh, and her nephew, that was really nice. I was just rambling on. I'm clearly not gonna remember everyone. But massive shout out to everyone who made this weekend. Absolutely amazing. Massive shout out to Alison, organizing uh, Queen. I, uh, can you just tell I'm really excited? That was, it was just good. It was just good to see everyone. It's just like old fashioned before my eyes now. You can't tell, but it is. It's, it, it was really strange as well because it was the last festival I got to attend before lockdown. So just being back there again was like, whoa continuing where we left off. Granted, I was back there in September and kind of had that feeling again, but I hadn't realized right away. I was like, oh, oh, that's why this is familiar. Hopefully it won't be too long till next time because yeah, I could get used to this again, even though I'm clearly, I don't have quite the same uh, knitting show stamina that I had back in the day. I am still recovering mentally. I like even like I was going to talk about the bullet journal. I don't think I will because I'm lagging behind because I just couldn't like, I need, it just needed to rest my brain a bit before getting back into the to-do list. So that's that. Then I got back to London and my flatmate's parents are also visiting from America. So that's been really nice. Uh, what's also been quite nice is that they've been agreeing to be my sort of yarn carriers. So I got to order some yarn and David's tea to their address so they'll bring over here. Sadly, I ordered the David's tea a little bit too late so that's not coming and there's another yarn order that was delayed for very understandable reasons. So I got three skeins from the first order that I made, which is by Busy Peach, who is a yarn dyer in the States who dyes on tensile. And that I haven't come across before and I thought, that's exciting, I wanna try that. And I spent a lot of time trying to, to choose a color that was me and there's a lot of great colors to choose from. Now, <laughs> I share the color and it's an amazing color. This is a really cool, like obviously you can tell with like a lot of the things I make, I'm dropping the skin. So they're very slippery, tensile, right? Um, and they're very shiny. And that's the thing. So when I was looking at the photo, I just saw the color and it looked like this was a color that I wear. You see it in person, it's very shiny because tensile is very shiny and that makes it look a lot brighter because it's just reflecting a lot. And I think that's really cool, but I'm also like, well, this is gonna be outside my comfort zone. <laughs> it actually looks a lot more in my wheelhouse on camera. I think that's the thing with this color when it's on tensile. Uh, the color comes across a lot, almost like more on, on film than it does in person. I see it in person, it is so shiny. It looks just pink, like almost towards salmon. Uh, and it reflects the light. So now, now that I am not having any lights on, just relying on my camera's exposure settings, it's looking kind of cool. But when I have the ceiling light on, it actually looks a bit peachy because <laughs> of the yellow from the from the light. So it really is quite like, just sort of becomes the color of, of the colors around it almost because the sheer reflectiveness of this fiber. Really wasn't expecting that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I love how saturated these colors are on, on natural fiber. I can imagine that's probably not easy. This is way outside my comfort zone than I was expecting. I, I, I guess I, I can wear this. That was the plan. Summer top, right? Tensil, summer top. Let's, let's talk a bit more about the yarn. Amazing dye, I've already covered that. 100% tensile. DK weight, 218 yards per 100 grams. Colorway is Sweet Cherry. I did check on the website and sometimes there it's called Cherry. So that's kind of why I was wondering if maybe I actually did order the wrong colorway, but I do believe Cherry and Sweet Cherry are the same colors. So there's the logo. Hopefully that's showing up. I, I just always get very excited when I'm able to get hold of some yarn from people overseas just because uh, if you're ever wondering why you don't see more yarn from over there on here it's because of the import tax it's just it's just very very steep because there is a, a, a quite a big percentage of the cost of the yarn and shipping and then there's the, a fixed handling fee it could double the price sometimes so I, I, if someone's traveling over here, I, I will make sure that they bring some. And so I did, so that was very exciting. That is the, the acquisitions that's left, which is good because I have to be out the door in an hour. Yeah, am I gonna say more about the bullet journal? We're we gonna finish up with the bullet journal. I think maybe we are, we probably are. I feel like that's the standard now. Um, those of you who don't know, I have a scribble and dot journal. I really don't think it's, you know, matters which journal you get as long as it's got the things that you are looking for. As I've shown you previously, I got my little year spread, a uh, half year per, per spread. Tracking my, my knitting, and I can almost finish up the ones a year now. 
This is just my my own designs, mind you. I'm also trying to like track when I'm publishing things. Currently, I have one dot on this entire calendar, so that's, that's, that's how well that's going. I am also tracking how often I'm leaving the house. I'm not going to show you that one. Oh, and I even decided to track my finished objects and I made little illustrations. I did say I was gonna try to find a way to track my works in progress, be that designs or otherwise. So I'm making like these little tiny drawings of them <laughs> and writing out like, uh, just so I know what they are. I also like messed it up so much. There's like eraser marks here and I just like, I'm such a mess, honestly. I'm not gonna show you my sleeve tracker, but it's a little bit out of whack though. And yet the daily, wow, it is so dark. <laughs> but yeah, the daily log it is, okay i found myself putting off tasks so much there's problem i have that the book can't fix on its own unfortunately that i've actually put a post-it in in here now that i'm moving around because it's got a bit silly especially after unravel when i just couldn't even bring myself to pick up the book or do anything that required brain but i would say it's going well i wish it would have been a bit easier for me to get back into after busy busy days i that might just come with practice yeah i think that's more to do with the sort of effect of, of lockdown and just like the energy levels maybe not quite there i don't know hopefully i'll come back who knows but i'm really enjoying the journal and i guess i just wanted to say a few words about that at the end to sort of follow up on the last two episodes where I have talked about it. Uh, and it's something I didn't really touch on on the previous few times, and that's sort of the notion of productivity. And I was a little bit nervous about maybe covering that because it can be one of those times when I get a little bit high up on my little soapbox there. My point of this journal is not really to be more productive, make more things, work more. Me, me, me. Like I said, that would just get me back to the place that got me into burnout to begin with. Like, that's not really a goal of mine. I realized like that lifestyle isn't healthy for anyone. And so I am not using this journal to do that. I am using it to literally get more things done. Now that's not the same as productivity per se, not that there's anything wrong with productivity as such. When I say get stuff done, I mean the things that I can manage to do that is manageable, that I should do every day, like, you know, getting out of the house sometimes, going for a walk, making sure I've like, you know, done the usual like just hygiene routine for the house and for myself like we're talking very basic I just kind of didn't want to get into that it's a little bit embarrassing too uh but also you know it isn't about working super hard for me at least <laughs> not for a while yet I'm not even in a place to do so the main point for me is to get a sense of time so that I know how long things take and I think that's quite fundamental no matter what amount it is that you're trying to do no matter what sort of things that I I'm trying to do and just kind of get back into a routine so less about you know cramming through all the the chores because that's it's not even doing that for me <laughs> but more about getting an overview in proportion to time does that make sense it's always like when someone's just gonna find my video somehow and tell me off for like thinking bigger than than just knitting right I just think it's quite abhorrent to measure people up against productivity and usefulness like that's what depressed people say like i myself and like people i love when i've been depressed the first thing they'll say is like i'm so useless i'm like what is what way is that to measure yourself up, up against like useless like who, who are you supposed to be useful for who are supposed to be using you like what is that you know so i don't really subscribe to that I, I don't even subscribe to being valued for for my achievements i subscribe more to being valued for my efforts you know like it is kind of funny to me like if i hadn't succeeded in finishing my phd would my efforts have somehow been less well no the outcome is, is different but like you know am i making sense so yeah that's sort of my my ethos around my journaling you know your journaling may be different we covered that part already but you know it's, it's suiting your needs and my needs is getting back into a routine with things really don't take that much effort because it's just a routine that's like the goal for me personally and to get a sense of time to not have literally like swallowed up a week or two where I didn't even realize time was passing I have to realize time is passing now because I'm logging every day and um, that is sort of the thinking it's nice to kind of get have some time at the end of this episode to to cover that part instead of just kind of like the the nitty-gritty of the actual journaling because that can be so different from person to person uh but i was definitely right about the thing that i said out of sight out of mind because i was tidying up in here and then i put my book in the bookshelf behind me next to my knitting needles that i have been organizing which is good news because that means we're ever closer to my needle review my grand needle review so i was tidying and i put my book back in here with the other books and i forgot it for two days so clearly this thing needs to be out in the open i can't forget it because i will but yeah it is so dark right now you wouldn't believe me.
So that's a sign that we're gonna wrap this up. This has been so nice. Nice. It's nice to be unravel if you guys were there. Any of you? I mean, one of you. Just hi. <laughs> and I hope I'll see you next time, whether it's on this podcast, in the comments, or in person. Uh, don't forget, the, the newsletter is a good way to find out about things like this and other things. And just, yeah, I almost forgot to mention that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.